What's up guys, Terrace Cousin here back with another video and in this one I'm super excited because we're going to be building our first custom hook. It's a hook that honestly I use in pretty much all of my React applications. It's called use debounce and it's very useful when you want to delay the updating of a certain value by a certain amount of time. All right, cool. Let's begin and let me show you right away the problem. I have here the search input box and a list of users. This is a pretty big list and what we can do is we can search users. So I'm going to start typing something like John and you're going to see that we have something strange going on. It's not displaying to me the results right off the bat. It's actually flickering a little bit. If I remove John, you're going to see the same thing happen. We have a bunch of results. They're moving around and then finally they're settling on their position. If I type another name like Sarah, for example, you're going to see the same thing, but now we actually had no results. So it seems like our application is broken, like something's going on. If we look at the code, we can actually investigate what might be the problem. So this is the component that is running the app that you just saw. And essentially this has a couple of pieces of state like loading, search and users. The search obviously is what is used for the input and the users are what is displaying the users. And then we have this use effect here that on change of search, is going to create a function called load users, which is going to set loading to true, fetch the users from some API server, set the users that it got as a response from the API, and then set loading to false. If I open fetch users, actually you're gonna see that it's not a real API call. I am mocking the API. I'm essentially creating here a list of static users that are just randomly generated. And then in this fetch users function, I'm creating a promise, which basically means that this function is going to wait for a second, and then it's going to return a filtered list of users based on the string that it was given. Well, if we look at the code again, specifically this use effect part right here, you're going to notice that this runs every time that search changes. And search is a state that we have here and it changes via the set search function, which is passed to this search bar component. Now, whenever search changes, this use effect is going to come here and it's going to fetch the users again with that new search value. But remember, fetch users takes one second to complete. So if the search changes, changes before that one second is up, what's going to happen is you have the first request that is fired, that's going to take one second with the initial search value, and then you make a change to search again, it's going to fire another request, but that first request still hasn't finished, eventually that first request is going to finish, it's going to come here, it's going to update the users, which is what we're going to see, and then the second request with that second value, that added letter, if you will, is going to also come back and also update the users. And so that's what you're seeing here. Every time I type a letter, a request is being fired and then one second later, it is returning the response. And if we make a change before that one second is up, you're going to see this flicker because every request is returning sequentially after one second. Well, if you look at our app and how it's designed to be used, we only really care about the last letter that the user types. We don't care about all of these intermediate steps in between. For example, we don't care if the user wants to just search for J or O or H or N. We want to search for John. So we want to wait for the user to have finished typing and then perform the search. But our code right now listens to search on every keystroke. So we need to essentially change that so that search only updates after the user has finished typing. So we're going to come to our folder here and we're going to create a new file called hooks.ts. And then in that file, we are going to export our component that we're going to do export const use debounce. This is going to be the name of our component. And then I'm going to press equal. And then this is going to take in a value, which for now, I'm just going to give any, but we're going to come in and change it to type in just a second. And also it's going to take in a delay, which is going to be of type number. And I'm just going to create an empty function body for now, because we're going to do this in just a second. First, I want to get rid of this any here, because we actually don't want to have any in our application. Any means that you lose all type information of value. Instead, what we want to do is we want to create a generic type that will let TypeScript automatically infer the type of whatever value is. And so what we'll do is we'll come here and we'll do T like this, and then we're going to replace value with T. And then that will allow TypeScript, this is basically a syntax to tell TypeScript, hey, I don't really care what this value is. It's going to be of some type that we're going to call T. And then here, that type of value is going to be of type T. And you're going to see TypeScript is going to automatically figure out what type value actually is. Then in the body of our component, which we can now do, we're going to create a state variable for our debounce value. So we're going to do const and then debounced value and set debounced value. 
that's going to be use state of type t right because we now have access to this t inside of this hook and then it's going to get value as its initial value we can then import use state from react and we have the first building block of our hook then what we want to do is we want to make use of this delay here and only update this value after the delay has passed. So we can do that with a use effect. So we'll do use effect. We're gonna do this like this, and then we are going to give it an empty dependency array for now, because we're going to populate it in just a second. Then inside of this body, we are going to create, as ChatGPT suggests, I can actually do this here. We're gonna create a handler that I'm actually gonna call timeout, just because it's a bit more clearer. We're going to create a timeout that after the delay, will set the debounce value to the new value. Remember, this use effect runs as a reaction to something, which we haven't given it yet, but since now we're using value in the body of this use effect, we have to give value here. So when value changes, we're gonna create a timeout that is going to set the debounce value in this hook after a certain delay. If value changes again, before this timeout has had a chance to fire its code, this code is going to run because this is gonna trigger another run of the use effect and it's going to clear the timeout, which here should be timeout, right? And so a value is going to change. It's going to clear this timeout and if it's been less than the delay, this value, this set debounce value is not going to get fired and so debounce value is still going to be referencing the older value and then it's going to create a new timeout that is then going to try to set the new value, the debounce value after the delay. If value changes again in that time, the same is going to happen again. The timeout is going to get cleared and created again. As long as the value changes before this delay, debounce value is going to stay the same. Only once the delay has passed and value hasn't been changed again, will this code here in this timeout run and only then will you get a new value in the amounts value. And also just because we are using the delay inside of our use effect, we also have to pass it here to our dependency array. So we'll do delay here and now TypeScript and VS Code is no longer going to complain. And actually I just noticed it's always good practice to give this a default value. So we're just gonna do 500 because we don't always want to have to provide a value. We want this hook to be kind of self-sufficient and we only need to provide it a value and then it's going to take care of the rest. So now if we go back to our component, we can actually make use of this hook. So I'm going to create a new line and I'm going to do const debounced search is going to equal use debounce and then search and then we don't need to give it a value because we've just set a default value. If I import use debounce from our hooks, you're going to see that search is of type string. We have automatic type inference from TypeScript. And now this debound search, as we've just said, is only going to be updated after it's been 500 milliseconds since the last update. So what we can do then is we can come here and instead of search, we can do debounced search. And then in our dependency array, instead of search, we can do debounced search. And so now with this, if I come back to our app, as long as I'm typing, right, I'm deleting stuff, I'm typing, I'm deleting stuff, nothing happens. But as soon as I let go, and it's been 500 milliseconds, that debounce value is going to get updated, which is then going to trigger this use effect to fetch the users. And so it doesn't matter how fast I type, for how long I type, or even what I type. All that matters is as soon as I let go, it is going to wait for 500 milliseconds and then trigger the update of debounce search. And this is very useful when you're actually typing something and you actually want to search something because if I type John, it's gonna wait until the end of my typing to then fetch because usually humans, we type more than one character each 500 milliseconds. And when it's been more than 500 milliseconds, we can safely and reasonably assume that the user has finished typing. And so this efficiently solves our problem and we've used a custom hook to do it. So we got a lot of value because this we can reuse anywhere in our application where we need to have similar functionality. And this, what we've done here is actually a very common pattern that is done in a lot of apps. Whenever you're fetching data by user input, you usually want to wait until the user has finished typing before fetching so that you don't trigger too many fetch requests and bottle up your API. And so what we've learned here with this use debounce is really, really important. And I would urge you to spend as much time as you need to make sure that you fully understand this. 
Cool, so there you go. We've now essentially successfully built our first custom hook in React. That was great. If you got any value from this video whatsoever, please consider giving it a big thumbs up, making sure to subscribe because I am going to post a lot more of these types of videos and it also shows me that you enjoy my content. If for whatever reason you haven't joined the Discord, honestly, again, I cannot stress this enough, you are missing out. I post about things like this, tips, tricks, anything about React, I review your code, I answer questions. I'm generally there and available for you to become a better React developer, it is the best resource available online if you're looking to learn React. If I were you, I would honestly spend the time to go and check it out, join the Discord, because you are not going to regret it. It is the first link in the description down below. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching. It means the world to me, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.